Hi everyone! More You Don't Know Jack coming up now! We're at 30 seconds. Donnie here, thanks for enjoining us. How many people are you? Just me. Okay then, one indivisible, fantastic. Now enter your name for me. You know what? No. Oh, ho, 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 no. I asked for a name and I want name, Gash Dabbit. Let's call you Princess. Because Works for why me. would anyone go by the name Princess? That is ridiculous. Excellent. Now let me tell you how to get playful. Questions will ameliorize before you. Select the boutonniere next to the correct answer. There is a timer that's tick tockling away. That means the sooner you are to buzz in, the more De Niro you'll make. Or Squeender. Okay, guys, let's get ready. Ten seconds. All my breath. Let's have a crash check. Six. Five. Yeah, I guess it'll work for crash. Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, or as my library card says, Masterson Cookie Delinquent. I can see that. A single player game, I see. Yeah, thanks for making us go through all the effort. You're welcome. And the wrong answer of the game is brought to you by It's Never Too Late Adult Orphanage. Just because they're not cute doesn't mean they're not lonely. Sniff out our sponsor's wrong answer of the game hmm. and you'll end up with a great prize and serious cash. <laughs> okay, let's not waste any more time. Right off the bat, Selva Selv. Suppose rapper Flavor Flav is playing a Salvador Dali exhibition. If he wants the giant clock he wears around his neck to match the clocks in Dali's painting The Persistence of Memory, what should he do? Rock the mic so hard that his clock shatters? Bust rhyme so fly that his clock flies away? Play song so chill that his clock freezes? Or heat up the stage so hot that his clock melts? That's the only Dali painting I recognize as fast. Often referred to as Dolly's melting clocks, the clocks in persistence of memory appear to be melting. <laughs> Much like Flavor Flav's reality dating show Flavor of Love, I hear Salvador Dolly once had his own show where women lined up to take rides on his famous mustache. Ooh, that still I looks call painful. This one Farfagnoogies. Because it's not an actual beetle, which of these potential Volkswagens would not qualify for a game of slug bug? Volkswagen Firefly, Volkswagen Cricket, Volkswagen Ladybug, or Volkswagen Scarab? Which one isn't a beetle? Cricket or the Firefly? I'll say the Cricket. Fireflies, ladybugs, and scarabs are all types of beetles that are classified under the Coleoptera order. Crickets, on the other hand, are not classified as beetles. But I imagine this car would still have a good antenna. Huh? Crickets? Uh, thank you for the crickets. We needed that. Coming up next... If it's not Harry Potter, it's trash. Time to get trashed. What's up with that pause? Hmm, this trash seems to be coming of age nicely. Let's see what we got. The severed head of a pig, a pair of cracked children's glasses, and a broken conch shell. Looks like somebody's been recreating a famous novel in their spare time. Which novel is it? James and the Giant Peach, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Lord of the Flies, or Oliver Twist? You know, I think that's supposed to be Lord of the Flies, but Oliver Twist was an orphan. Where's that confusion? And I'm right! right answer. A pig head on a stick, the glasses of the character Piggy, and the all-powerful conch shell are all important symbols in the classic novel, Lord of the Flies. I always thought that book was pretty anticlimactic. They just go out and buy some flypaper? Cheap. No, they'd need to get an orphan in there somewhere for it to be Oliver Twist. And speaking of getting orphans, you just got... A middle-aged orphan from the It's Never Too Late Adult Orphanage. Because the middle-aged need love, too. This wrong answer of the game just got you an extra 4,000 smackers. Congratulations. I think that's one prize I can send back. 
next? You this know, game just sounds saying. disgusting, and it's a dis or dat. Ooh. I'm gonna read off seven names, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a college football bowl game or just a menu item at a food chain. If it's a bowl game, press one on your keyboard. If it's this just one, a I food might bowl, do well at. Press two. A right answer could take you to the playoffs, but a wrong answer will leave you with a terrible taste in your mouth. There are 30 seconds on the clock. All right, let's get started. Might. Tostitos Fiesta, KFC Famous Bowl, Taco Bell Border Bowl, Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, and Express Panda Bowl, Chick-fil-A Bowl, Chipotle Burrito Bowl. Decent, but you didn't exactly bowl me over. And no, you don't deserve a better joke than that. Probably not. Beefo Brady sponsors the St. Petersburg Bowl. Unfortunately, Beefo Brady's didn't decide to call it the Beefo Brady's Bowl. I think that's a shame because I love saying Beefo Brady's. Beefo Brady's. Where's the bow, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, oh, Panda yeah. Express might have sponsored a bowl. Bucker I don't know. Beefo Brady's. <laughs> hey, you know that Disney Channel show, That's So Raven? Don't pretend you don't know. Anyway, who is not so Raven? Edgar Allan Poe's famous character, Ray Lewis, Atticus Finch, or Scott Levy? Uh, I think it's Scott Levy. Not a wrestling fan, I take it. No, I'm not. I so wanted you to pick this one. Atticus Finch is the main character in To Kill a Mockingbird and has nothing to do with a raven. I could have sworn there was a Raven Finch reference in that book. Raven, I'd have to say Finch is my favorite bird name. My overall favorite bird is the red-faced booby. Let's say so long to round one. I could have sworn he was nicknamed there. Don't Raven. Don't screw it up. It's been since high school since I read that book, though. Remember, oh, I'm well. doubling the value of each question in round two. It's time. Why not try literally? You know what I hate? People who overuse the word literally. Literally, I hate it. It literally drives me insane. Considering which part of the cinnamon tree literally gives us cinnamon, from which airport vendor would you literally get your cinepack of caramel pecan bonds? Leafabon, rutabon, flowerabon, or barkabon? Cinnamon leaves, aren't they? You should have leaf no. this one alone. <clears throat> Let me show you something. Cinnamon is literally scraped oh, okay. from the inner tree bark of a cinnamon tree. So instead of Cinnabon, you'd go to Barkabon. Mmm, bark. Question seven. Try this on for size. Swankin' it. Hey, what was the name of that Clint Eastwood directed boxing movie with Hillary Swank? One times ten to the third power dollar baby? One times ten to the sixth power dollar baby? One times ten to the ninth power dollar baby? Or one times ten to the twelfth power dollar baby? Million dollar? That movie was Million Dollar Baby. I actually never saw that movie because of personal ethical beliefs. I just don't think babies should box. Well, when you look at it that way. Poor didn't chickens picking out a mate. Oh. Guess I'll marry eight. Next up, we're all the biggest losers. If contestants on The Biggest Loser were judged with a Scoville scale, what would they have to do in order to win? Throw the best curveball, absorb the highest amount of UV rays, be the spiciest contestant on the show, or split in half the cleanest when hit with a chisel? Scoville is how they measure how hot something is spicy, isn't it? The Scoville scale, yep. or the Scoville organoleptic test, is a scale for measuring the spiciness of peppers. Come to think of it, eating really spicy foods the night before a weigh-in on The Biggest Loser might be a good weight loss strategy. You know, I can't fault the logic there. Open wide for World War Wonder Bread. 
What do the Pillsbury mascot and a United States World War I soldier have in common? Both originated in 1916, both are called Doughboys, both wore white hats, or both ate only bread. They're both Doughboys. Infantrymen in the United States military were known as Doughboys in World War I, and Poppin' Fresh, the Pillsbury mascot, is a tiny man made out of raw dough, also known as a Doughboy. <laughs> And just like the Pillsbury Doughboy, all World War I military Doughboys were known to laugh like a little child when you poke them in the stomach with something other than a bayonet. Hold me, never let me go. I'll allow it. Hey, what's up? May I introduce... No! Wheezy does it. If you found yourself in an actual vomitorium, what might you be doing? Painting a mural, processing animal fat, leaving an amphitheater, or training for space travel? Probably training for space travel. That sounds like something they'd have. So what you're saying is there's lots of vomiting on the way to Uranus? <laughs> that Are you too. thinking of this one? A vomitorium is a passageway underneath the seating in an amphitheater. The vomitorium was also the name of my dorm room in college. And with just the fork, huh? Okay. Step right up to the jack attack. When you see two clues that match, press one. 4,000 big ones if you're right, but you lose 4,000 if you're wrong. And of course... Remember the clue. It's got to be a match that fits this clue. You're so full of it. These things are huh. all full of something. Good luck. Sand? Okay. Free and easy piñatas are full of candy. Where's the candy? There it is. Toys would work too, I guess. You. Well, they had to go there sometime, huh? Russian dolls are full of other Russian dolls. Matrushka dolls? Yeah, I think that's a name for them. Breast implant. Silicone? Thermometer, mercury, or alcohol. Depending on, you know, how old it is. Twinkie. Green filling that will never expire. That was an easy one, though. That's all she wrote! Holy cow, I think it's safe to say your head is full of brains, your heart is full of courage, and your soul is full of hope. And in case you can't tell, I'm being completely full of s. You don't know Jack! Indeed, you are a cookie. Nice work, folks. Donnie, what's going on? Just give me the single if you want to proceed with continuation. Later tonight on the season oh, well. of Hoof I don't have an excuse for the questions I missed this time. Other than it's just a little too late. One famous horse. Oh well. Oh my god, he was in that movie Hidalgo? This marks episode 37, which said. means there are 36 <laughs> left to go. But it's not just fun and games. Unless they ever release the Jack Packs on horse. Steam. Most of these women are here. Please to do that. On TV. Please, Jellyvision, me, please. It's real. I'm falling in love with that please. horse. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. I'm not here to make friends. I am here to f a horse. And it's all part of one I just had to pause for that exclamation there. In LA. I'm afraid so anyway, one this has left. been another week we'll of me camera, playing You Don't Know Jack pick me, pick me, pick me, and sharing my me. failure for everybody else. <laughs> so, better get off until next week, horse. see you later. As always, of of I leave you this with the commercials. Not just back. He's bareback. Meet Timmy. He's just like you or me. He likes to listen to music, play, make friends. The only difference is, Timmy doesn't have a mother or father. Timmy's an orphan. Hi, I'm Timmy. Uh, Tim. My parents died in a tragic car accident when I was just 42. In retrospect, maybe I wasn't in any condition to drive. Anyway, uh, will you be my new mommy or daddy? I promise to be a good son. I'll keep my room clean and eat all my vegetables. Except for lima beans. Those things give me horrendous farts. Uh, I'll need a car. And it'd be great if you had an extra room or a 
basement for my drums. There are thousands of Timmy's out there just waiting to find their forever home. If you're ready to start a new-ish family, call the It's Never Too Late Adult Orphanage because grown-ups are children too. Tag, I am Pope Benedict XVI. When I enter a church, I always reach for the basin of holy water as a gesture of symbolic cleansing. But when I enter a gymnasium to either get my elliptical on or just a wail on my rock-hard abs, I reach for a bottle of vitamin holy water. <laughs> vitamin holy water replenishes my electrolytes while giving me godlike strength for higher reps and an even higher calling. It's sacred, refreshing, and loaded with vitamin G. Hey-ya, hey-ya, hey-ya. Do you ever feel like your fishy friends get the raw end of every deal? When the chihuahuas are carried around in their Louis Vuitton purses and the labradoodles are on long walks in their fur trim vest, your goldie fish is left in its bowl, naked. So come shop at Fashion Fish Does. We are the country's leading provider of designer fish apparel and accessories. Hats, shoes, glasses, pants, underwater styles that'll make your fish look fantastic. Right, Goldie? Come to Fashion Fistas! I like your hoodie. Where'd you get it? Pack Sun. Oh, where's there a Pack Sun? I don't know. My mom drove me. This exchange has been brought to you by the Council for Overheard Tween Conversations. Next time on the Laugh Factory Radio stand-up special, it's visual comedian Rich Coolidge. You ever walk into a restaurant and the waiter looks at you like this? And you go like this? <laughs> I told my mom I was single and she handed me this. Look at it! <laughs> if I ever own a poster shop, this is what I'm going to sell. Hoochie Mama! <laughs> That's next time on the Laugh Factory Radio stand-up special. Bowling. Why ruin such a primal sport by gingerly putting your fingers through the ball like a dainty little schoolgirl? 